I'm Christian Zip, and we are here at the Edmonton International Film Festival, where we have just premiered here in Edmonton, Somebody Marry Me, and of course, we are with the star, Ray Abruzio. Ray, welcome to Edmonton. Nice to be in Edmonton. It's a nice town. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about Somebody Marry Me. Okay. Um, I guess the big premise that is the selling point for you is that it's all one shot, but there's much more to it. Maybe tell us a little bit about the plot and, and how that concept of shooting it all in one take works for you. Well, I think the concept of uh, the director, John Asher, had the concept of wanting to shoot a movie in one take and that's where he started. And then we knew that we had to come up with a story. Well, he knew. He had to come up with a storyline where the uh, time constraint would become the, one of the plot points. So the fact that it's, uh, say, 90 minutes, 90, we didn't know how long it was going to be, 98 minutes, that the fact that there's the urgency within the storyline would be aided by the fact that it's one shot. So there's no cheating in time, and the audience goes on the journey. So our storyline, as John came up with it, is that my... My father, who's very, very wealthy, is on his, uh, apparently on his deathbed, and uh, I find out that if I'm not married by the time he dies, which could be imminent, he's going to give his $419 million to his 23-year-old wife of three months. So uh, I have to go on this journey to uh, get married, and uh, comedy ensues. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a really unique thing to do, and, and people maybe don't understand that this is really maybe the first time that it's truly been done, especially for a comedy. So maybe talk to us a little bit about the process of having to get ready for that, of doing an entire 90-minute film in one take. How do you even lead up to that? Um, well, we started with the premise. Uh, John, had, John and I have worked together as actors, but he also has seen me in some plays, so he knew we needed to approach this like a play. That's the way we first started. So we rehearsed it on a sound stage, on a regular stage, the theater stage, for about two weeks, half, half day, two weeks, uh, and just rehearsed it in pieces and just tried to get the characters, you know, like, you, like as you would rehearse a play where the characters become a part of you, you know, so it's, it's just ingrained in you so that whatever happens on the day, you're secure enough in your character that you could go, go with it. Um, but we didn't really rehearse on the locations until we were actually shooting, so that was a... That was the biggest challenge, was incorporating what we had done on a soundstage and then to do it on the location with real props and real driving. Because, of course, on the soundstage, you're not driving, you're sitting in a folding chair. So, yeah. yeah. The logistics of it are probably far more complicated than people even think. So you're having to do a million things at once as you watch the action happening around you. Uh, invigorating, frightening, fun, or maybe everything together. It was, it was everything together. It was invigorating. I, you know, you couldn't wait to get going, but once, you know, they're getting ready, you hear them say, roll camera, you know, the, your, your heart starts pumping, and I realize, okay, I have 98 minutes now. I can't let up. I can't think about anything else. I have to stay completely focused, and I have to count on other people being there for me. And that was the, the beauty of this. this. You know, there's 15 other actors in this movie. And, you know, for instance, there's a long scene where I'm driving and I'm talking on the phone, talking on the phone. I have these four phone calls. And then as soon as I hang up or right before I hang up, the, the police officer has to be there. You know, so what I had to do is to rely on the ADs and the other actors to just be there at those moments. And everybody was just flawless. And, uh, you know, it was really, really... A, a, a group effort. I mean, this was really, everybody just put their heart and soul and everybody just had to stay completely focused and they all did. Yeah. yeah. We mentioned some of your uh, earlier credits where we talked about things like Sopranos, Mad Men, and even when we were talking about Dynasty. You do a lot of drama. Uh, it, what do you like about embracing a comedy like this and maybe the madness of having to do it all in one moment? You know, I didn't, I, I, this is a comedy, but I really tried to let the other characters be the funny ones mm -hmm. and uh, I just chose to play this guy just where he would just he's on his mission yeah. and these things happen to him and I would just let whatever they do I would just react to them as I would without trying to be funny or playing it as a as a comedy although I've done a lot of comedy I've done more comedy on stage than I have on television although I've done some uh, sitcoms but this is a whole other animal mm -hmm. but I just really I just really approached this uh, not, not like a comedy, but just as a realistic, his emotional journey. I really just looked at his emotional journey and then just let the comedy play out. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. that's difficult in itself, because you're having to set other people up at the, the same time. And, and not laugh at their brilliant responses, because <laughs> people did some very funny things. Uh, 
Yeah, that was that was the challenge. But um, you know, you just go back to your, your acting basics and just you know know what you want, what you have to do, and just just go for it. Find your intention and just you know follow it and stay focused. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your relationship with the director John Lerner and John and Asher. how oh, John Asher, right. sorry, Michael Lerner. If you Michael know, Lerner, See, yeah, yeah. flipping names here. Know. Sorry, John Asher. Uh, but maybe tell us a little bit about your relationship with him and how that came to fruition and how this project came to fruition for you. Well, it, it's very interesting. Um, John and I both got cast in uh, an episode of In Plain Sight, which is a TV show that was shooting in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and we had never met before. And we're on a plane. We didn't really talk. We're on the aisle, uh, both on the aisles, and there's an actress sitting next to me who's nervous about flying, and she's digging her hand and nails into my hand. And all of a sudden, we're heading into Albuquerque and the whole plane goes boom, boom, and we see this dark shadow fly over and John and I look at each other her eyes are closed we look and we see a FedEx plane fly right over us we had a, almost a mid-air collision so once John and I landed we immediately had this this bond and we became very fast friends and we were in Albuquerque and we just hung out together and we really enjoyed each other's sense of humor and we just got along very well and then he saw me in some plays and he had this idea and uh, we just really have a really very easy collaborative uh, relationship uh, and it's a lot of fun. We've become really good friends and uh, that's the way it's worked. Yeah, the yeah. film is uh, Somebody Marry Me. We've been at the Edmonton International Film Festival with the, I guess it'd be the Edmonton premiere of Somebody Marry Me. Canadian premiere. Yeah, Canadian premiere, even bigger. And uh, Ray, thank you so much for your time and coming out and seeing us thank and enjoying much. the film with us. Thank you very much.